this song the normal upbeat bouncy yay the packers just did something great when you're hoping the packers did something great yesterday you think they did something great but something inside of you says i'm not so sure we're squaring our feelings this morning welcome to hour two Zabe and Butch in the morning, Brian Butch at his battle station, Josh behind the board, and the voice of the Green Bay Packers joining us now, Wayne Larravee. Wayne, good morning. Good to be, good to be with you guys again. <laughs> I know, I know. How are you feeling inside about the loss of some of these great, beloved, respected Packers? Not just Aaron Jones, but Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari is going down easier because it was a bit more expected. The Jones thing was a shock to the system. Yeah, the, you know, it, it's really hard to there in Jones because you look at what his body of work was down the stretch. He picked up that young team, and he carried them to the playoffs, and he nearly carried them into the NFC Championship game. He rushed for 100 yards in five consecutive games. No one in the history of the franchise, not Taylor, not Horning, not Dorsey Levins, not Amon Green ever did that. Wow. And so, you know, that's your last, you know, hey, if, if your last um, remembrance of uh, Aaron Jones was six weeks on IR and maybe 100 yards uh, in five games, that's one thing. But when you saw what he did and you know the kind of person he is, it's hard. And it was a hard cut. I know this for a fact uh, for Brian Gutekunst and the Packers organization. It really was a hard decision. They said they want the word, not they, but the, the reports were they wanted Jones to take nearly a 50% pay cut to stay. That's a lot. Uh, do you think that was too much to ask of him? Obviously, he and his agent, I uh, believe he's David Mulligetta, believe they can get a better deal somewhere. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know what the figure was, what they were asking him to take a pay cut for. Um, just like, you know, the uh, we'll find out the structure of, um, you know, uh, the new contract for the new running back. We'll find that out in the next day or two. Uh, I'm sure that what the structure for that deal is going to come out to be less than what it would have been for this year for Aaron Jones. Uh, but I don't know for a fact, uh, but, uh, you know, guys, if that was okay. the deal that he was cut by half. I don't I don't know that. I, I don't think that would be it. But who knows? Jones is a Drew Rosenhaus client. I apologize for that. Not yeah. Mulligan. And he's probably going to get a nice contract somewhere else. Yeah, I'm I mean, uh, the guy Jacob, I think Jacob sets up with a four year, 48 million. The contract the, has a 12, the, yeah, 12.5 yeah. signing. Ahead, go ahead, Butchie. Yeah, four year, 48 million for Josh Jacobs, Wayne, with a yeah. 12.5 million signing bonus. And it looks like it's more. His base salary for 2024 is 1.2 1 million guaranteed the first year makes it 13.7, but after that, it's all backload. So it's really a one-year heavy loaded and then falls back after that. And and again, the, the big numbers, don't, 48 million doesn't matter because yeah. he's not going to make 48 million, okay? that it, The guaranteed money matters, and um, and usually it's a year, one- or two-year deal, basically, is how it breaks down. Uh, yeah, the agent's going to – they're going to tell you the 48 million uh, to make it look like he's making 12 million a year. That's not the case. When we find out the contract – and and how it sets up. I mean, Kirk Cousins is not Minnesota. Why? Not for money, for structure of contract. That's what it's all about at this time of year. Missed tackles forced by running backs the last three seasons. Number one on the list, Josh Jacobs. This guy can make you miss. Now, Jones, he had a, a Jacobs was at 194. Najee Harris was second at 175. Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey round out your top five. Jones was somewhere in the 12 to 15 range with about 130 missed tackles. I'm super excited for Josh Jacobs. Wayne, are you? I, I am too. Um, you know, as much as I hate to see Aaron Jones leave, because, you know, like Goody said, he is heart and soul of that football team. But, um, you know, Jacobs is four years younger. He's got three thousand three one thousand yard seasons behind him. Two years ago, led the NFL in rushing at sixteen hundred plus yards. He is also an excellent good receiver out of the backfield, so he's a pretty complete back. And that factor you mentioned, um, Zay, you know, he got off to a slow start. We were out there mid season uh, in Vegas, 
And we're I, you know, we did the rundown on him. And yeah, he got off to a slow start. He did, he was holding out for a new contract. He didn't like what the Raiders were offering. I think he came back on the one year tender with the understanding he would not be, um, uh, not be restricted from free agent again. They wouldn't tag him again, in other words. And he got off to a very slow start. And it wasn't until the second half of the season that he really started playing well. And he had a big hand in that uh, the win over Kansas City. And, and I think um, this is a guy, they got younger at the position. And, you know, we don't know what the figures actually are, but we they probably got a little cheaper at that position as well. But I think they got an excellent back. There's no doubt about that. When the conversation has been a lot on the running back because of Aaron Jones leaving, but the Packers also go in free agency and make a, on the addition of the safety. This is big. I, I think this is the biggest deal because they take care of a, a, a need position. They needed somebody in that back line who really can make plays. And this guy makes plays. Plus, he's an excellent coverage uh, um, safety. You can put him in coverage. He's one of the top coverage safeties in the game. They paid a heavy price for him. You always do that when you go to free agency. But I think this guy, you know, three interceptions last year, over 100 tackles. He's the guy they need on the back line of this defense. So, you know, hey, he's 24, uh, what, uh, 24 years old. Uh, this is the kind of guy that you can live with and grow with in future years. You know, I go back to this. This particular front office for the Packers, Goody, um, Milt Hendrickson, uh, their lieutenants, they're very good in free agency. Don't forget what they did in 2019. They took a terrible football team. They put four free agents on there that were big-time contributors, and they elevated that team to a 13-3 and season and the playoffs and an NFC championship game uh, performance. I'm talking, obviously, about um, the two Smith brothers, um, Adrian Amos in the secondary, and Billy Turner at offensive tackle. So I, I think these guys are good at free agency, and I think they got two guys in Jacobs and McKinney who will contribute not just this year, but in the future. Pro Football Focus gave McKinney a grade of 87.8. That's fourth best at his position league-wide. And he was 40, 43rd overall on their total free agent list that included all positions. So that's pretty good as well. I want to know why the Giants get out of the Xavier McKinney business. Yeah, why you know, terrible? it's interesting what the Giants did because they also got out of the Saquon Barkley business and he was the face of their franchise. Um, right. You know, the salary cap, Zay, makes you do things you otherwise wouldn't do. You know what I mean? Right. Um, had it not been for the salary cap, Aaron Jones would be a member of the Green Bay Packers right now. Right. So, you know, that's what happens at this time of year. All I can say is uh, he has been, according to the analytics I saw, he's one of the top two or three coverage safeties in the game today. So um, this is a guy, like I said, makes tackles back there. That's been a problem in the secondary for the Packers. Safeties, making tackles, locating the ball. This guy intercepts passes. That's something Packers safeties don't do a lot of and haven't in the past. Uh, so this is, I think, an excellent pickup for the Packers. And he's a guy, again, he's 26, I want to say. So, um, no, I'm, I believe he's 24. Jacobs is 26. These yeah, are guys, no. these are not one-year rental guys. Right. They There is apparently a deep safety market and a deep running back market. And Goody got arguably the best and the youngest of those two deep markets with money that was kind of surprise money, wasn't it, from the record-breaking bump in the cap yeah so this has been quite the treat this spring we were we were girding ourselves way at least i was to another off season of financial pain to finally work off the rogers buyout but instead it's like christmas in march yeah, yeah it is because it went up what 30 million this year and then mm -hmm. you do the david bakhtiari deal which they they had to do um and that adds twenty million to it. Now you're up to what fifty or something like that. And and you know you're not going to bring bring back uh, Devondre Campbell. Um, that adds a couple of more million there. So um, you know they were able to make a couple of deals. That now what this does, guys, it kind of gives them a little bit more of a direction where they can go in the draft. The next step will be the draft. I'm not saying they're not going to add another free agent. They probably I'm just going to say when do you think they're done in free agency? Or do you think there's a, another addition, a couple of them, small ones there? It's early, uh, Butchie, and I think on the second level, I'd be surprised if they did another first-level free agent, but I would think a second- or third-level free agent, yeah, I would think they could do somebody like that, yeah. 
I think that's my biggest thing that I look at with with the ability of where they're at is I I still expect them to be very active with it. I do. Yeah. I think some areas there, and and I think you talk about the draft side of this. Is that so? Obviously, backup running back is still a position that they need to take care of. Do you see them doing that through the draft? Is that is that the kind of the only way that you see them operating right now? I wouldn't say the only way, uh, but it depends on who's available and do they fit what the Packers like to do. But I do think the draft is going to bring a running back. And I think the draft will bring a safety too. Don't get me wrong. But now they're able to, and, and they have, I believe, the fourth or fifth most draft capital coming up with five picks in the top 100. So I think this is good. They're going to be very active in the draft at filling some of their needs now. But they got a veteran safety. Okay, they got a guy back there who can make plays and maybe run the show. Um, they got a running back who's a little bit younger than the one they had before and a little bit more durable. That's the one knock on Aaron Jones. He he did have some injury issues, but gosh, um, I, I just hate to see the guy go because he's such a part of that team and what he did down the stretch, unprecedented in Packers history, uh, five straight 100-yard rushing games, two of them in the playoffs. Uh, the Packers got compensatory picks recently for the fifth the sixth and the seventh rounds bringing their draft assets to 11 picks upcoming total and the highest of those picks was for alan lazard leaving yeah how about oh, that there you go how about that yeah <laughs> i would almost argue wayne too many players <laughs> <laughs> almost but not quite was- Almost right, but not quite. I mean, a lot of these extra guys that were fifth and seventh round guys like Wicks and uh, and Valentine, they're like, yeah, we want to keep these guys. And they were kind of throw in picks, right? Yeah, no, no. You know, we always underestimate the fourth or fifth or sixth round picks, but it's amazing. Aaron Jones, I believe, was what a fifth round pick, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yes. you know, David Bakhtiari was a fourth, if not, I'm not mistaken. And, you know, those are you can get some great players in the middle of the draft. And, and that's another area that I really like what Goody's done. Uh, they do really well in the middle of the draft with people. And, hey, they got a couple of, what, seventh rounders last year that I think can play. I mean, uh, Valentine and Johnson. Johnson at safety, Valentine at cornerback. The, those guys look like they can play. And I think they're going to be even yeah. more of a factor in their second years. Yeah. All right. Uh, for the record, uh, Dylan's 28 would be available for Jacobs, which he wore for the first four years in Vegas. He switched to number eight this year. Eight would require a buyout of Sean Clifford's jersey number, mm. which oh, probably is doable. Should be doable. Don't know if he cares enough, Josh Jacobs, to buy out that number eight. I don't like running backs that wear single digits. I'm a traditionalist, Wayne, in that I want him wearing a 20-something or a 30-something. You, you are uh, speaking to the choir. I don't like any of this numbers garbage that's been going on in the NFL. You know, trying to figure, looking at a guy on tape and saying, wait a minute, that linebacker is a quarterback number. Isn't he a quarterback? Wearing number eight or seven or something like that. This is garbage. This is awful stuff. I'm sorry. Terrible. Yes. As long as 20 or eight gets in the end zone, I could care less what jersey number they wear. I'm going to tell you that, boys. (laughs) Well, you know, obviously, Zabe and I feel there there is something to be said Wrong. for the sectorial, uh, you know, aspect of the player more, reaching the end zone. It's more, yeah. than, how it, it's more than, than, than my sense of this is the proper number for this position. It messes with my visual brain cognition to try to compute a running back who's an eight or a linebacker who's a seven, like Quay Walker. It doesn't look right. Like, I have a hard time evaluating, was that a good play by that guy or not? He's got a weird number on. Yeah, I know. I'm the same like way defensive ends in college that are single-digit numbers. Uh, or a kicker that's 98 in college. You're like, what are you doing in that number, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wayne. Uh, it changes the NFL constantly. We just have to deal with it. And it's a yep. sad day for all of us who love Darren Jones. But – uh, we'll be very happy for him wherever he goes, unless Maybe. it's Minnesota. Then we'll be uh, sort of happy for him, yeah. with him alone. How about Dallas? I mean, you know, how about I, Dallas. I, I asked somebody last night about Dallas, and you know, they said and the Cowboys, you know, let Pollard go, and they're kind of hurting because they know they've got to pay Dak big numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, Aaron Jones would be perfect for Dallas. Aaron Jones might even give them a discount to go to Dallas. Because that's his home team, his home state. It's the team he loves. 
Uh, he and plays he, well in that stadium. And he plays great in that stadium against that team. I don't know how he'd play for them. But um, Mike McCarthy, Aaron Jones, you know, if, if they could afford him, I don't know if they can. Somebody told me they can't. And I like his name. He's Jones, just like me. That's my you know, last name. I'd have to buy yeah. this guy. Hey. Another <laughs> Jones in town. <laughs> All right. Wayne is always a pleasure, my friend. We'll talk again soon. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. Don't be strangers. Right, Thanks.